Hi, in this video I'm going to do a bit more of an explanation about position and what it means to be in good position and what it means to run out of position. And this is vital when you're trying to score heavily in a game because you need to have an easy shot which would lead to another easy shot in order to work through the break and score and score consistently. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. So I've got these little pieces of paper that you can put down onto the table to help people to learn what the positional areas are and how to manipulate them to find the best position on the table when you're scoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just break off and then I'll put the cue ball in a desired starting position in order to start this exercise. So just a break off shot to begin with. So there's the break off. Pick up the cue ball and place it down for the first shot. Now obviously the first shot is going to be to pop the red into the corner and get onto the black. But we also need to get onto a red following the black, which makes it to be three shots in front. So shot one, shot two, and any other red afterwards that we hope to get on from the black. So experience would tell me that to get on this red from the black, I need to leave this red straight with the black to leave this angle. So we pick up the card and we have to identify what the good area is. So the good area would be here, straight with the black. So this point, which is good for a straight black to leave this red. So if the cue ball ventures further and goes to here, it then starts to become a bad shot. And if it goes past the red point, this area here, it's then a bad shot and we could lose the break. So that's what this is for, to teach people where the cue ball needs to be and where it doesn't need to be to make it a bad shot. So what I'll do is I'll play the first red and we'll see what the outcome is. So place that one there. So now we are trying to leave a straight black. So just roll the red in. And it's not too bad. It's not straight, but it's still in the good area. So we can now come off the cushion and leave this red into this pocket for the black again. So we now start to count the shots again. We need to be three shots in front. So even though we've just played the first shot, we have to recount again for another three shots. So shot one is the black for the red, and then we need to get back onto the black again. So to get back onto the black again, we have to move the card and decide what a good shot is and what a bad shot is. So this is the deflection off the cushion here and out. And the arrow shows the deflection. So that would be a good shot then it starts to become a bad shot because now I'm already snookered on the red and can't see the red. And if it goes past this point, then we lose this red. But fortunately, there are other reds to go for at the moment. So if we overhit the shot, then we could be on this red or even this red here. So you always have to think about the options, even if a shot goes wrong. So that increases the margin of error, which means that this card 
isn't as crucial now because there are choices. And the reason that there are choices is because we've extended that margin of error. So now we can turn a bad shot into a good shot because if it goes past this point, although we'll lose this red, we gain this one or even possibly this one. So that's the point there that we mustn't land in because that is always going to be a bad choice right there. So let's just play the black and try and get that good position. So there's the good position. We found the good position. Because that gives me the opportunity to get back onto the black again. So now, you count three shots in front again, even though we've only played one shot. So to get onto the black is easy from the red, but we need to get on a red after the black. So to get on a red after the black, the cue ball needs to be here, which is leaving the black straight with the table against this cushion, this straight line here. Or we can be high on the black to be somewhere here. So that changes the position of the card. It now becomes this. So there is good, there is bad. But again, there are other reds to go for. So that increases our chance of scoring. So we use the card again, and it shows us that a bad shot can now become a good shot because it's going further. So if it goes further, we have this red into the corner, and we have this red into the middle. And there's also a possible plant. So always be aware of the table layout so now we'll play the black after this red. So we want to leave this straight angle here, this straight with the table. So drop the red in. And there. It's now a good shot. And we're on the black. So start the counting again. Three shots in front. So there's the black. Now, if we stun up the table this way and create this line, we get the choice of playing two reds. So we can either play this red in the corner or this red in the opposite corner. So now, even though we know what the choices are, we also need to understand where the potential dangers are for the shot. So we use the card again and we are trying to stun up. So that's kind of the deflection angle coming up this way. We can increase that angle by using more power so that we create this line. And that's the kind of line that we, are desi that we desire. So to land there is possibly a bad shot because we can still pop this red, but we end up colliding into other reds and then the outcome is unpredictable. But if we hit it harder, we change this from being a bad shot to a good shot. So, we'll play the black, hopefully getting into this area. And there's the line. And anything after this point was good. So we've now changed the dynamics of the shot again. And we have the two choices, which I alluded to earlier, this one and this one. If I'd have gone even harder with the shot, I even had this red into the corner. So now we start again. Where do we need to be for which ball? into which pocket. So we pop this red and we can either get a contact off the cushion 
or we can just stun down directly for the black. So again, we'll use the card, and the deflection angle is sort of like this. So this is a good shot to either be straight with the cushion or straightish with the black into the pocket. But what we can't do is we can't land here. Because if we land here, we are forced to go into the reds, which aren't very favourable at the moment. But like I said before, we can change the angle that we pop the ball from. So we can either use the cushion or stun down direct. I'll, I'll stun down direct and try and land here on this straight line here. It's a bit of a stretch, but I'll play the ball. So it's still not bad, although we are straight with the black. So it wasn't quite in the good area, but it wasn't a bad shot. So now we can play the black and try and visualize what the next shot would be. So I can play the black into the corner and come out for this red in the middle, or even this red into the corner. So a good shot would be anywhere there. But if I land anywhere here, then it becomes a bad shot. So let's see what we can do. It's quite straight. It's actually really straight, to be honest. So that limits our options because we didn't quite get into the good area, you see. So, let me just take another quick look at that shot. Yeah, it's a bit too straight. So the only option we've really got at the moment now is to screw back and hopefully get into this area and develop these reds. So this is the only shot left available to me at the moment. So that option is no longer available. So we'll move those out the way. and try and screw back. So there, we've got the black and we've screwed back. Now, what other options are available? Not a lot really. There's this red with the rest, or this red into the centre, or even that red into the corner, which is a tough shot, but it gives us the best position. So we'll play that red and screw back. Hopefully we get back onto the black again. So what I'm looking to do is to be somewhere here, somewhere here. Because if we go that way, it's a bad shot because there's no color available. So I want, what I want to do is to come here, down this way. So I shall screw it into the corner and come down this way. If I land there, it's obviously a bad shot because I can't get on the black. So let's see what we can do. We may have to cannon this red on the way of potting the, the red ball. So let's just see what we can do. We missed it. Anyway, that's just a little bit of a taster to show you how these coaching tools can help people to learn about the game and as you saw there as a re direct result because I didn't get the right position the rest of the break was jeopardized and I broke down and this is just one of the extra little bits of tuition tools that I have to help people to understand what's actually necessary to play the game 
and to play it at a better standard. So this is just one of the things that I use in the range of equipment that I have at my disposal. And if anyone's interested in any one-to-one -one coaching or indeed any online coaching, then please get in touch and email me at gmail.com. So Simon Seabridge at gmail.com and I'm sure I'll be able to help no matter what your ability level is and and then we can go from there so but I hope you like the video there'll be plenty of other videos such as this one with different tools and training equipment involved in them and I hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching and see you again bye